Hi there. So what you're looking at right now is the thermoplastic starch that I made in the previous Edenia installment. I was going to do some testing on this, however, the properties that I found were really, really suboptimal. It wouldn't even dissolve, uh, even in water, that well, and it really didn't have any tensile strength. And I think I see the reason why. You see, during my initial solubility tests, something interesting happened where I tried to dissolve some of this in some IPA. And what actually happened was the glycerin actually started leaching out of the starch and I was left with a white powdery substance that just completely flaked to nothing. Uh, what, so what I think happened there was that there was incomplete hydrolysis or incomplete uh, gelatinization of the starch. You see, starch, in order to, for it to hydrolyze with an acid, it needs to reach what's known as a gelatinization temperature, which for starch, for the potato starch I'm using right now, is about 80 to 90 degrees C. Another consideration is the type of acid I'm using. So before I used acetic acid, which is vinegar, and that was a 5% solution, or at least I thought it was, when I read the label, it said a less than 5% solution of acetic acid, which wasn't really good enough for my needs. So as you can see here, I bought a bag of citric acid to add to this potato starch I'm using. I bought a whole bag of it to do some testing. The thing about this citric acid is that it's a solid as opposed to a solution. And this means that you get pure citric acid that you add to the mixture. And this citric acid is actually a stronger acid than acetic acid would be. And so it will, gel it will gelatinize the, the starch a lot better. And also citric acid doesn't smell like vinegar does. Now here's something else to note. Glycerin is something that you should really keep an eye on measuring when making a thermoplastic starch because to my discovery it's actually a sort of super plasticizer. I added a little bit too much to some that I made off camera and it really just made it into a sticky goop that you couldn't really make anything out of. So you really have to be a little bit more conservative when using glycerin than I, I thought previously thought. Anyway, with all this in mind, I have a new batch of thermoplastic starch on the go, on a new hot plate. My old one broke, the heating element uh, went on it. Anyway, with this one, I actually have a uh, temperature control, which I didn't really have. Well, I had temperature control, but I didn't really know what the temperature was. However, this gives me a uh, convenient uh, temperature reading for you know how hot the, the plate is, and that gives me more control over temperature. So I'm going to uh, uh, let this go and uh, see what I get out of this. The key thing to know when making thermoplastic starch is that you know it's gelatinizing when it starts to go clear. First it will be a milky suspension like material, then it will go towards a semi clear but still looks like a suspension type thing and then as it gelatinizes it will become a lot clearer. So as you can see now the solution is completely clear, well, almost completely clear, and that is a good sign that the starch has almost fully gelatinized. And this is our yield, well, most of it anyway. I have some specimens over there. But essentially, this is a much better thermoplastic starch than I made before. With this hot plate, I have a lot of temperature control, 
especially with the thermometer that comes with it. And so as a result, when I was making this, there was minimal decomposition of the product. Because of that, the result was a plastic with superior properties. And you'll see this with the tests I'm about to perform. Firstly, we will take a look at the plastic's optical clarity. I have a specimen here, which is a very thin film. And as you can see, if I put it up to the camera, it has a very, if I can focus, and shine it um, on my LED lights, it has a very, very good optical clarity. And this is something that I didn't really have before. The, uh, the plastic I had before was very discolored. However, this is very clear. The second property I want to demonstrate is its thermoplasticity. I have my soldering iron at 170 degrees. And as you can see, it clearly melts when in contact with heat. Now, let's take a look at this material's mechanical properties. As before with my previous TPS, this material has very good impact resistance. As I will demonstrate, it clearly survives being thrown across the room. What's interesting, however, is its yield strength. Before, my other TPS was quite a, not really brittle, but it was kind of a flaky uh, material with not really much tensile strength. However, this stuff really, really has some, some toughness to it. Um, you can stretch it and pull it apart if you really, really try, but this has gained a lot of tensile strength as opposed to my previous uh, attempt. As I'm demonstrating to you now, this material, rather than sheer breaking, it really yields before you can actually break it. Um, see, I'm, I, I'm, it's yielding, it's yielding, but I'm, I'm struggling to pull it apart. And this means that in terms of strength, we are actually approaching uh, something along the lines of thermoplastic polyurethane in terms of toughness and strength, which I think is pretty amazing considering that this did, again, come from potato starch. On to solubility testing now. In the middle beaker, I have some water. On the left, I have some acetone. And on the right, I have some IPA. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and break apart three pieces of my thermoplastic starch. And I'm going to see how well they dissolve in each solvent. These are roughly similar amounts, so let's see how they do. Now as we can see, after about 15 minutes, the starch plastic basically completely dissolved in the water, only partially dissolved in the isopropanol. You can still see there's quite a bead in there. And it was really unaffected by the acetone. This indicates that it is fully soluble in water and only really partially soluble in alcohols. Now I actually have a lot more TPS here that I still need to dry up a bit. As you can see here, this stuff it's still quite uh, squishy and this means that the water inside it is plasticizing it quite a bit. So I'll get to work soon on drying that. And once again we take a look at this material's optical properties. I really think that if this material was refined further in terms of the process of making it and lots of other stuff, this could actually be really as a really good material for thin film applications. If you want to make this yourself, you can go back and watch my other video on how to make thermoplastic starch. But in that video, I miss out some key points that I think would really help in being successful with this. Firstly, 
when starch gelatinizes, it tends to swell quite a bit, and so you want enough solvent, enough water, to allow for that kind of expansion. So what I recommend for the, the solvent ratio to starch is I recommend that the solvent be about 10 times the amount of starch that you want to uh, turn into TPS. In order to get the plasticization right, I actually used a syringe like this one here to add the glycerin in. In this case, I added about uh, four, in between somewhere in between four and six uh, milliliters of glycerin to about this is about 50 grams of TPS here. And even with such a small amount of glycerin, this is still quite a soft material. I reckon that in order to get something that's really, really rigid, you have to you still have to use uh, glycerin or sorbitol or whatever, but you need to use a really, really small amount. So while this material isn't perfect, I think I've made strides in improving the process and improving the quality of the material, as you can see here. I think I will continue to improve on this in the future and hopefully get something that could actually be used for quite a few applications. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope I've given some clear information on how to get some better quality thermoplastic starch. Thank you very much for watching. This has been the second episode of Adenia. This is me, signing off.